Let's revise physics measurements for exams. If we're measuring small lengths underneath three centimeters, we need to use a micrometer. As always with micrometers, we need to take several readings and take an average. For distances larger than three centimeters, we can just use a ruler. We just need to ensure that our distances are taken at eye level to avoid a parallax error. Time could be measured with a stop clock or if we're interested in the amount of time it takes for an object to go, let's say, from one position to the other, we could position a light gate at those two points. This will help us to improve the accuracy of our experiment. Talking about light gates, we could also directly measure the instantaneous speed of an object at a given point using light gates. Temperature, of course, is measured with a thermometer and mass is measured with a top pan balance. Just be aware of the zero error. Pressure, on the other hand, is measured with, surprise, surprise, a pressure gauge. If we wanted to figure out the volume in a lab of an irregular surface, for instance, this whiteboard rubber, all we'll need to do is to use a measuring cylinder filled with water and measure the amount of volume that's been displaced. Very often in physics questions, you'll be asked to determine the power of an electrical component. If that's the case, we need to measure the voltage with a voltmeter and the current going through the component with an ammeter. Force, on the other hand, will be measured with one of those, which is a Newton meter. And of course, if you wanted to measure an angle, for instance, to prove Snell's law, what we would need to use is a protractor. Now, you also absolutely need to have a look at this video in which I go over probably the most common error I see in experimental questions and this video is just over here.